Socrates, my dear mentor, I have a restlessness that consumes me. I wish to change the world, to transform it for the better, but sometimes I feel powerless in the face of adversities. My young friend, it is natural that you feel this desire for change. But always remember this wise truth, try to move the world, but start by moving yourself. But how can I change myself in a way that influences the world? The answer lies in your pursuit of wisdom and virtue. If you become a better human being, your actions and words will reflect that improvement, and you will impact those around you. I understand, Socrates. So, if I want to transform the world, I must begin by transforming myself, cultivating virtues, and acquiring knowledge. Exactly, my disciple. Genuine change starts from within. By acquiring wisdom, you will be better equipped to deal with the world's challenges and inspire others to do the same. It is a powerful lesson. I believe that by improving myself, I can indeed positively influence those around me. So it is, Plato. Always remember that the transformation of the world begins with small steps. Be an example of virtue and seek wisdom, and your light will illuminate the path for many others. I thank you for your words, Socrates. It is an honor to be your disciple and learn from the wisdom you share. The pleasure is mine, Plato. Continue your search for truth and self-improvement, for that is what will make a difference in your life and in the world around you. Socrates, I have come to realize how important it is to be kind to others. Each person we meet is facing their own struggles and difficulties. You are absolutely correct, my dear Plato. Every human being carries their personal battles, and often, we are not aware of the struggles they are facing. So, we should always act with kindness and understanding, as we never know the weight of the pains and challenges that others carry. Exactly, Plato. A simple act of kindness can have a profound effect on someone's life. We can make a difference by showing empathy and compassion. Sometimes, it may be challenging to understand the struggles of others, but kindness can open doors to mutual understanding. Understanding that everyone faces difficulties reminds us of our shared humanity. Kindness is a reminder of our connection to one another. And, by being kind, we can create an environment of mutual support and encouragement, where everyone can find comfort in their journeys. You are learning quickly, my young disciple. Kindness is a virtue that illuminates the world and makes our lives more meaningful. I thank you for your wise words, Socrates. I will strive to cultivate kindness in my heart and spread it to those around me. That pleases me, Plato. Kindness is one of the most beautiful virtues we can practice, and I am sure you will make a difference with your actions. Socrates, my wise mentor, I have been reflecting on power and its influence on the lives of men. I believe that the true measure of an individual is related to what he does with the power granted to him. It is a perceptive thought, my young Plato. Indeed, power can be a mighty force, capable of shaping the conduct and destinies of men. Power can be used for both good and evil. Some use it to promote the common good, while others use it to satisfy their selfish ambitions. Exactly. Power can reveal a man's true character. Those who use it with wisdom and justice show great virtue, while those who use it in a tyrannical manner reveal their corruption. It is a lesson that everyone should learn. Power is not an end in itself, but a tool that can be used to promote good or evil. And it is our responsibility to use power wisely and prudently, always seeking the common good and justice for all. I agree, Socrates. We should seek knowledge and wisdom to guide our actions with justice and kindness, regardless of the power we may hold. Virtue is the key to the proper use of power. Only when our actions are guided by virtue can we truly measure the worth of a man. The measure of a man is not in his wealth or position, but in his actions and the positive impact he can bring to the world through the power he holds. Perfectly put, Plato. Power is a responsibility that we must assume with care and consciousness, always seeking to do good and improve the lives of others. I thank you for your wise words, Socrates. Your teaching is a guide for my journey in search of wisdom and virtue. I am glad to be your guide, Plato. Continue your quest for knowledge and virtue, for that will truly measure a man by what he does with power.
My dear Plato, I have heard of a saying about marriage that deeply intrigues me, the ideal in marriage is for the woman to be blind and the man to be deaf. It is indeed a curious saying, Socrates. But as philosophers, we must question and reflect on its implications. Exactly. Let us analyze it together. I believe the idea behind it might be that if the woman is blind to the husband's faults and imperfections, and the man is deaf to the wife's criticisms and complaints, they could live in harmony. Interesting perspective, Socrates. But could ignoring each other's faults truly be the key to a happy marriage? That is what we must question. Perhaps the secret lies not in ignoring faults, but in accepting that we are imperfect beings, and true love involves mutual understanding and compassion. I agree, Socrates. Accepting and appreciating each other in their entirety, with virtues and flaws, is fundamental for a healthy relationship. And what about the part where the man should be deaf? Does that imply not listening to the needs and concerns of the wife? That part seems problematic to me. Listening and understanding each other is essential for building a relationship based on trust and respect. I wholeheartedly agree. Communication is the foundation of any meaningful relationship. Listening and being heard is a way to cultivate understanding and connection between husband and wife. So, perhaps this saying is not as fitting as it may seem. A truly healthy marriage requires empathy, communication, and mutual respect. Exactly, Plato. As philosophers, we must seek a deeper understanding of human relationships and the essence of true love. Yes, and continuing to reflect on this saying may help us find wiser answers about what truly constitutes an ideal marriage. Let us then continue our pursuit of wisdom and understanding the mysteries of love and human relationships, my friend. I agree, Socrates. Together, we shall continue our philosophical journey in search of the truth. Hello, my dear Master Socrates. I would like to ask you about a thought I recently heard. Do not wait for a crisis to discover what is important in your life. What do you think of this? Ah, uh, Plato, always eager to learn more. Well, let me ponder upon it for a moment. Of course, take all the time you need. In my humble opinion, this statement carries a very important truth. Sometimes, People only value the things they have when they lose them or when they go through difficult times. But in reality, we should always be aware of the importance of things in our lives and not wait until it is too late to realize it. I understand perfectly, Master. And what can we do to avoid such situations? We need to be constantly attentive and conscious of what is important to us and cherish those things even when everything is going well. We should live our lives with purpose and meaning and not wait until it is too late to act. I comprehend. Thank you, Master, as always your words are of great wisdom. I am glad to be of help, Plato. Never stop seeking knowledge and wisdom.